Sears. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. This video is a little bit different. Today we are doing an Agco crop tour, well over the next couple days. So um, We're going to see everything from the setting up and little bits of the plot. So a little bit about this Agco crop tour plot. This was planted mid, mid May, I believe. We used a Fent Momentum 32 row 16 planter. So um, this is six, or 30. This is 30 inch corn. But the growing season's been a little goofy this year. We started out we were very we were pretty wet, then it turned dry. So that's kind of the stress this corn has been under. Also, this field was complete no-till. This was not strip-till like the rest of our fields. We did run an inline ripper across this ground last winter. So a little bit of a little bit of history on this field and the crop that's in it. But yeah. Now we'll get, now we'll now we'll get to the uh, to the crop tour. And it's, it's perfectly uniform all the way across the 40 foot. And if you go back that way, in automatic mode, it's perfectly uniform all the way across the plot. So I don't know, it's, it's super, this plot is super interesting compared to the, a lot of the other ones I've been in just because we're picking up on those differences. I think because it was a little bit dry, okay. whereas we've had a lot of water in other places. Okay, so you're saying some of these waves across this are probably compaction yeah. related then. Okay. That's right. Very briefly for the group, what do you want us to kind of say? Hey guys, we're here with the team from Agco. It's uh, been setting up the crop tour plot. You guys just want to go ahead and introduce yourselves? Yeah, I can get started. My name is Arthur Santos and I'm the marketing manager for Seeding and Tillage at Agco. Hey everybody, uh, I'm Derek Reeser, uh, field product specialist with Agco Corporation. Hey, Matt Rushing, I'm uh, leading the global crop care team for Agco, focused on crop protection, nutrient management, uh, soil preparation, and planting. Hey, and I'm Darren Goble, and I'm responsible for agronomy at Agco. Hi, I'm Jason Lee, and I'm an agronomist with Agco for North America. Hi, I'm Larry Custer, Senior Marketing Specialist for the Seeding and Tillage Group at Agco. Almost like we're children of the corn. Nice. Well, yeah. So is that a tire track there, then? Yeah, so this... Yeah, so the... That's five. Five, six. So this should be nothing. This should be next to, this should be right where it either the planter be, run here. It'd either be just the tractor tire or tractor and planter, which, depending on. Which plot? This is, this one's the plant, tractor and planter, because this is the first plot. Okay, so this one has none of the uh, compaction technology turned on, right? That's correct. And okay. the 55 tire PSI. Pressure, yeah, and the tire pressure was high. So this would be like a standard planter, yep. tractor combo, with no load logic. Yeah, when, 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 when you start digging in this, it is super hard and you're not seeing just well you're seeing a few feet of roots here at the top Let's see if we can, yeah there's some right down here it's a little bit hard to see the compaction i guess compared to some soil types it's a silty silty loam so you're able to feel the density just by sticking that knife in there and tell the difference basically yep. yeah yeah versus over here or it definitely goes on a lot of, i mean easier how deep are we? I like to usually try to get yeah, two man, feet no, deep. No, sure hard, probably. Sure probably Jason, lay down there for a second so we can kind of judge it. <laughs> <laughs> There's a good doctor over here just digging away. Ten years of college. I just want to get a good zoom of Jason's <laughs> do doctoral <laughs> shoveling abilities here. Look at this that. This wasn't part of my thesis. I didn't tell him about it at the job interview either. <laughs> What's the code word? Action? So in this part of the world, it's been very hot most of the summer and very dry. And you're saying this is probably just a result of bad pollination from that heat? Poor pollination, then a little bit of uh, kernel abortion here. Uh, these shriveled up ones uh, where the kernels are just aborting. But yeah, you know, anytime we get a lot of heat stress around Ended pollination, you get, yep, the yeah. tip back like that. But you know, even, um, let's see, 16. 
very photogenic. Sure. I've never heard that before. <laughs> 16 by 33, which is actually about average what we've been finding out in that field. So really not bad. So even with that shallow compaction, you know, we probably have had just enough, just enough moisture to, you know, be able to put on some decent ears. So. So we were dry, we just weren't completely dry. Yeah, had it been really dry, it maybe would have been, uh, yep. it would have definitely been worse. Right. So this is from pulled from rows that didn't have any kind of traffic yeah, no, on them. No track, no tire tracks on either side. Um, still pretty shallow, but um, definitely seeing a lot, a uh, lot more robust root system. Um, and let's see, one of these I was really seeing a good. Not so much on these, but when I was digging up roots in there, you can definitely tell it was planted a little bit on the wet side because we were seeing the roots grow right down the furrow. Okay. Looking very corny. Yeah, that's right. And yeah. pregnant. Yeah. You know what's good corn when it's bugged out. So uh, in this plot behind behind me, around me, we uh, we do is planting depth studies so we start at one inches and then we go up in half inch increments all the way to three and a half inches so on my right we have an inch planting depth here and on my left I have uh, inch and a half planting depth and something that we we typically always see is that you have up to a 14 bushel loss if you plant too shallow and up to a 12 bushel loss if you plant too deep you can kind of see on this inch we see we have a pretty large tip back average across the ears and then on our inch and a half you can you can see that over average we have a little less tip back as compared to to the inch and the whole idea behind this study was to figure out where's the right planting depth and that really stems from the moisture content that's in the ground when you're planting so we want to plant into moisture and we want to plant so that the root structure has a great uh, start and that nodal root system can get the moisture for the whole year across. This year was a drier year here in Ohio and so we um, see that we have a little bit more tip back because this root system on the inch had less of a chance on the nodal root system to find moisture throughout the year and as we go down deeper actually if we look at two and a half inches or three inches we have a lot better root structure to be able to get to that um, to moisture we actually almost eliminate our tip back uh, because of that planting depth. All right, so what I have here on my right is a three inch planting depth. And then on my left here, I have three and a half inch planting depth. And it's a pretty unique plot once we get to this really deeper planting setting. Um, what we're seeing more of actually is yield. So we actually have this uh, hand count yield is around 230. And then uh, the three and a half inch yield, we're actually down to 167. Like in a normal year, like that two to two and a half inch plot's probably going to be our be be where be where it's at. But this right. year is just so dry. Yeah, this year our, our three inch is actually uh, probably our best yield in this crop for this condition that we had this year. Um, it's just really important that we're talking about you know where we're planting at depth wise and having those conversations and thinking about it throughout the planting season too. So as you start in the spring, you might need to plant a little shallower versus later in the spring, you might need to plant a little deeper depending upon where the moisture is in the ground without sacrificing things like late emergence and getting yep. a seed that doesn't produce. This is what a magazine interview Here, looks like during COVID. Do I want to oh, do that? Yeah. post hole driver serving two purposes camera mount installation marking a spot for them to stand at the browns farm my name is arthur santos and i'm the city and village marketing manager at echo and i'll be puts a seed in the ground it's one of the most unfortunately for the film crew this field is right along a busy road so they happen to do a lot of takes in between cars passing so a little bit about the crop tour plot in this plot back in the spring we used the fent momentum planter to plant 
different settings just to kind of test some things. So like right here we have our depth plot from one inch all the way to three and a half. We have different singulation plots, different downforce plots. And with that Fent planner, it has what's called a load logic system, which airs down the tires for less compaction. So they're doing a lot of compaction studies out here. And in this uh, virtual tour, they're, you know, kind of showing what they're seeing with that. This is the on deck area, isn't it? That's right. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna just get my cheap shot your cheap feet. Here. Yeah, it's really nice. It got beat up. Yeah, really good. Yeah, good guy. It's gonna be uh. <laughs> oh yeah, you wanna do your deal? That ready? Is Derek gonna give us a dramatic walk out of the corn into? Yep. The... Gonna come out, holding ears, ready to go. <laughs> Perfect. looking at is skips and doubles. So first, let's talk about a double. What I have here is an ear, one of the two ears actually, that was created from a double. So let's take a look at what the stand looks like. So let's take a look at what a goof plate stand looks like. All right, take a yeah, Their yield components are the number of nodes that you can get um, per plant, and then the number of pods per node, mm -hmm. and then the number of seeds per pod, and then the weight of the seed. Jason's just getting ready to record a scene here for the virtual tour, and what's this uh, swell pit here that we're looking at? Like, what's, uh, what's the significance of this part of the plot? Yep, exactly. So in this particular plot, we tried to create a lot of soil compaction. Uh, so in order to do that, we had a really high uh, tire pressure in our planter, so 55 PSI. Yep. And we also turned the weight transfer system completely off. So we had a lot of uh, weight. So this would be right more similar to like what our planters would be. Yep, exactly. Gotcha. Yep, okay. exactly. And so we dug this root pit here across the rows where uh, uh, those tire tracks ran. And if we look at this pit, you know, we kind of look at it across the rows, we really see here where our tire tracks ran, how we have a reduction in root growth, and also the soil is really dense there from creating a lot of compaction. Um, and this plant here, we dug up just some really shallow uh, compaction here in the shallow root system. And how, you know, we think about what we need with a root system, we want these roots to grow deep down in the soil, right? We want that to be able to capture water and nutrients. Um, but when we get a lot of this shallow rooting, um, we limit the crop's ability to take up nutrients and water, uh, which can be really detrimental to yield, obviously. So, um, and you know, the effect of this is gonna really vary by year. You know, if you get good rains and you've got good growing conditions, it won't have as big of an effect, but especially if it turns off dry and we have that shallow rooting system, then uh, we're gonna run into some problems. So that's what we're trying to show here. These root pits are really, really a good visual way to show kind of the root distribution throughout the field. Cause it's, you know, not something we often think about, right? As we, well, yeah, uh, I'm glad you guys dug it. Cause God knows I'm not walking well, out here and digging. <laughs> the good part is I didn't really dig it either. So oh. I just get to stand in it. Um, <laughs> But uh, no, so this is uh, really cool. And uh, yeah, we're gonna be doing this, you know, for years to come. So it's um, it's a good way to look at this. So yeah, you know, it really we, gives you a good visual of what what kind of damage we could potentially be doing just by just by planting. Exactly, but more importantly than how do we, how do we fix that? And yep. so that's what we're trying to do with our FET Momentum planter, so. Yep. All right, are you ready boss? Okay. Did you know that soil compaction can cause a 15% yield reduction every year? Movie magic. Got it? Yep. Right. All right, let me just get you, kind of just go through your speed a little bit so I can uh, get the audio good. Say what? Get you to go through the Just spiel. pretend like you're presenting, he's going to check the audio. Okay. Mary had a little lamb. <laughs> the fleece was white as snow. And everywhere that Mary went. You can, you can go through the presentation. I'm Larry Custer, a senior marketing specialist with uh, Agco Seed and Tillage Group. And uh, today I'd like to talk to you about some of the solutions that Momentum uh, can bring to the table to address these uh, compaction and uh, planting issues. Yeah, My time to shine, ready? huh? It's your time to shine. <laughs> there you go. Warm them up. Keep going. I don't know. Something like that. You, you better play. just stick with your day job. <laughs> my, I, I retired from my singing career. 
This is what happens when you spend too much time in cornfields. Let's talk about it specifically in relation to the planter and how current planters on the market today. So Arthur, now that we've uh, starting to wrap up the, the virtual tour and whatnot, like when will people be able to see the, see the video you guys are making of this? Yes, uh, traditionally our crop tours have been um, early September, right. but this year we chose to bring all our uh, protocols to yield. So um, customers and dealers will have to wait until early November after we get everything to yield and analyze. And, and most, most important, after we get our findings and the conclusions, um, then we are going to release the final Fend Momentum Crop Tour virtual uh, video. So in that, so in that video, they'll be able to see like the, the end results, not only just the stuff we're seeing today. Yes, then. and, uh, and uh, definitely early November, this video will be premiering in our um, Fent YouTube channel. Okay, so you guys can watch out for that on Fent's YouTube page. So we're starting to wind down the crop tour here, and uh, I don't know, it's been kind of a unique experience doing seeing a virtual crop tour versus you know actually having people out here, but it's been pretty fun. It's been great, and I, I, I just want to say, Brian, to you and your family, uh, thank you very much for hosting uh, the Agco team here. Uh, thanks for giving us the opportunity to utilize uh, your crops, your land, your labor uh, to, to put this crop tour uh, event together and uh, all of your support in, uh, in filming and, uh, and doing all the, uh, the, the hard work we've been doing out here over the last three days to get that virtual event ready. So thank you very much for your time. Well, thanks, uh, thanks for having us. Thanks for letting us use that planner. That was, that was a great experience. And uh, yeah, it's, it's really fun to see, uh, see you know, what the results of that planner and see you know, what kind of what kind of difference it's making. So, yeah, I appreciate you guys coming out. It's been, a, been a fun experience. Couldn't have picked a busier time along this road, <laughs> I don't think. But. Well, it, and we're looking forward to working with you even more in the future. This sounds good. Thank you, Brian. Yeah, thank you. Hey guys, one thing to keep in mind watching this video, this is just uh, some highlights of this crop tour plot. There's a lot of data here and then they are making a pretty detailed video on it so uh this is kind of you know, some of the highlights some of the some of the quick points of it so if you want to see like some more in deep more in-depth studies of it definitely be looking out for agco's uh, video of this plot so should be some pretty cool findings in there it's really cool to see the technology at work that you uh, you know that you've invested in that you've uh, used all year uh, and actually see the results of it and see it compared to different settings and whatnot so really enjoyed doing this stuff but it's also really cool to be able to work with a bunch of guys that have a lot of passion in this stuff. Everyone here is very knowledgeable. They've all been really fun to work with this over the last couple days. So good stuff. And uh, thanks for watching. And if you haven't, go ahead and thumbs up the video and subscribe to the channel. We'll see you in the next one.